The following is a presentation of GRS TV. We the ball high. On top, can we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. We the ball high. On top, can we so fly? Name in the bright lights. Looking like a star shot. We have reached the midway point of district play, and we have homecoming night tonight at Williams Stadium, where the Saxe Mustangs take on the Name and Forest Rangers. Hello, everyone. Steve Reeves. I'm joined by my partner, Bobby George. Bobby, tell you what, like I said, halfway through, midway through district play, this is a big game tonight. We've got Naaman versus Saxe. You know, Naaman comes in one and one, Saxe at one and two. So both teams really need to win tonight to kind of stay in that district title chase. Yeah, and, and they had a two-week lay over where they can really prepare for Saxe tonight as well. So uh, both teams coming in, they've had their losses. Uh, they're kind of mediocre right now. And, and one of these teams really has to s just stand up and say, hey, I'm going to take it to the other team tonight because we got to get ready for the rest of the season. I mean, you you got to get prepared that you're going to go to the playoffs. And if you don't have that mindset, I think you're going to have a long season. So, you know, they got Perales over there in, on the green uniform taking the helm. He's a sophomore at quarterback. And, you know, he is really – started to figure out the team and you could tell that the team is coming together uh, under his leadership as a sophomore and he's got a really good arm so you know they have name of force has some potential to really take it to Saxe. saxy has got a great defense though yeah absolutely and boy i tell you Saxe's coming off that tough loss last week to wiley east it was homecoming for them last week and again as you mentioned Naaman's had two weeks to prepare as they just came off their bye week so you know Naaman's got probably some fresh players right been able to nurse some injuries had the two weeks to prepare and and you know saxy has got a tough challenge ahead of them tonight yeah when you have two weeks to sit there and watch game film and then take a couple of days off and get in a hot tub and let your muscles get better uh, I think you come out and, and you have the advantage. And, and you know, Saxe, they had a tough game last week. They, they had to play uh, Wally East, and Wally East is really a good team. So we are set for kickoff here. A beautiful night for football, and the Mustangs will receive first. There's the high pooch kick. It's going to be taken around the 31-yard line and then knocked out of bounds is number four, Santana Quinn, for the Mustangs. So the sexy offense on the field to start the game tonight. Again, they really need to get off quickly tonight. They've, they've started slow in a lot of their, their games here. Bobby, they really need to make a, a nice offensive statement, I believe, here coming out from the start. They're led, of course, by quarterback number 16, Brendan George. And right now to start the game in the backfield, number two, Pope Akana. Three receivers on the field as well. There's a snap and the handoff. First snap goes to Popacati, breaks two tackles, gets across midfield. That's a good start for the Mustangs. Wow, if Evan Garcia doesn't make that tackle for Naaman Forrest, I mean, that's a gone. And he, look at this, he's he's bottled up right there. Somehow he just sneaks through and almost has a home run play right off the bat. Yeah, they're going to hand it off to him again to the left side this time, still on his feet, and then finally upended after a gain of maybe one on the play. So a better job that time of the name of defense, led by number 24, Xavier Avila. Well, he is a strong back. You know, he's 5'10", 195 pounds, and uh, that's pretty big size back when you're, when you're talking about high school football. So first possession here for the Mustangs, already in name of territory, and the ball comes loose. It's still loose on the field. And I believe Naaman has recovered. Boy, that time, just a bad exchange. As you saw, George try to hand it off once again. And I don't know, Bobby, whether he tried to pull that ball out here. He does and just falls on the turf. And then it gets kicked around. It's moving around. Hello, can I get it? No, you got it. No, I get it. Finally, number eight comes up with it, Arnold Irwin. He's there to save the day. 
So a promising start for the Mustang offense. They had their initial first down. They had the ball in Naaman territory, but then the first turnover of the game, not even a minute into the game, and the Naaman forced offense on the field now, and they've got great field position as they're going to start at the Saxe 47. The aforementioned number seven, D'Angelo Perales, the sophomore at quarterback. Nice quick throw out to Caleb Radford. It's going to be a gain of about seven yards on that first down throw. That's what you want to do. Just get a quick, quick hit out there, get some blocks, get your quarterback in rhythm again. And we were talking earlier, he's a young quarterback. Perala, 64 completions, 105 attempts, 61 percent, 841 yards in the season, nine touchdowns, two interceptions. You want to get him involved in the game early. There's a snap. They're going to hand off the ball to number 10, Isaiah Cunning, the uh, top runner for the Rangers, and he's going to be upended. That may he may have lost a yard on the play, as number 52 for the uh, Saxe Mustangs in on the stop. Boy, 52 comes in there strong, too. Makes a great, solid tackle. Yeah, Cunning is a strong runner. As he, we've seen in earlier broadcasts, goes about 215, so he is hard to bring down. And they give it to him a lot. 81 attempts on the year. So a big third down and five now. Naaman's first possession. They're going to hand off the ball up the middle, and he's going to be short. He may again. have lost it. Now, I think they're going to signal him down. And so they're going to mark it at the 40. That's a gain of only about two yards. It will set up a fourth down and three. First carry of the game for Elijah Masiwi. Well, 52 comes around there quick again. What they put on that ball today, it is. it must be a little slippery. Yeah, to start out, it certainly has. We've seen it on the turf twice now. We're just a little over two minutes into the ball game. Damon's going to keep the offense on the field here on fourth down and three. Play clock winding down as it's already at five. Well, Perales better hurry up and get this one off, and he's not going to. There's a delay of game unless they got a timeout. Yeah, they did get the timeout just as the clock expired. So we've got our first timeout of the ball game. We'll take a break with them. We've got 9.04 remaining in the first, no score. First timeout of the game called there by Naaman Forced again. Fourth down and three. They're going to keep the offense on the field. A double wing look. And the uh, lone setback is Ivan Garcia along with quarterback Perales. And we just now have the whistle to start play. Oh, There's a snap. Free play. Here comes a penalty. You're throw right, that. a free play. They're going to throw it downfield. Oh, oh, and in and out of the hands of the attendant receiver, Radford. But again, as you said, Bobby, this may be an automatic first down on an offside against Saxon. Yeah, but they sure would have liked to have had a touchdown right there. I mean, you throw the ball up there like that, that was right on the money in stride. So there's your call for offside. That, that of course, will give Naaman Forrest an automatic first down. They'll reset the chains as the ball will be marked at around the 35-yard line. So the first first down of the game for the Rangers. Penalty moves the yard. The ball up to the 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Rangers. Yeah, just underway here at Williams Stadium, homecoming night for Naaman Forrest. Well, Perales taking a lot of time. Play clock under 10 Boy. once again. There's a snap. Boy, they're looking at a screen pass here. And wow, <laughs> I believe that was a catch over the back. 
Dylan oh. Turner, I believe, has to go up and and steal the ball off the helmet of the defender. I mean, that ball, I, I'm not exactly sure, but boy, boy, game-changing play right there. Look at him just grabbing it off of the back of his helmet. Yeah, and that's one of those plays, Bobby, again, you know, it's easy to say, but if, if you're Dylan Turner, you probably don't even want to catch that. You just want to knock it down. Yeah, but you don't want it to be intercepted that's either. True. That thing was just sitting on the tap, uh, top of a helmet. So a loss of about three on the play, second down to 13 now for the Rangers. Handoff goes to Cunning. Boy, big hole up the middle. He runs over. I believe that was the free safety that came up and what a big run there by Cunning. He's going to get about 11 yards and set up a third down and one. Well, you see how thick he is. He's got huge legs, can really squat a lot of weight. And when he gets his shoulders down, he's 211 pounds. He just runs over a smaller safety. Yeah, that was the free safety out there. Ran right over him. So third down and short now for Naaman Forrest. And the handoff to Cunning, trying to go up the middle. Boy, nice sidestep there. He's going to have the first down and more. He's going to be dropped around the 15, but that's a gain of 10 more. And they've been getting the ground game going early here against Saxe. Well, a nice little sidestep, just finds the hole, gets in there, and Brunswick has to come out from the safety position there to make the, make the tackle. First down, Naaman Forrest. 7.30 remaining here in the first quarter. There's the snap, another handoff to Cunning up the middle. They're going to keep going to the well until it stops up and gain of about three more, maybe four on that carry. Corey Walls on the stop. Naaman loves to throw the ball, but they have found something here. They usually rush the ball, I don't know, about 143 and 137, two games, last two games. So, you know, about 130 yards, 140 yards a game, but they really love to throw it. But you can see why they want to run it here. And off once again up the middle, this time the Mustang defense starting to figure things out. They close it up there, Bobby, no gain on the play. Well, that's what will happen, though. You'll get all the safeties. You'll get the linebackers. Everybody starts coming up to support that run. And then Perales will go on the outside and throw it up uh, to his receivers there and, and make a big play. So that's exactly what uh, the Rangers are wanting. They want them to, to suck up real tight. And then Perales can do something with, with his arm. So third down and seven here for the Rangers. They've got to get to the five-yard line to pick up the first down. There's a snap. They're going to fake the handoff play action bootleg. There's the throw to the end zone. That's a catch. That is a touchdown number 22 for the Rangers, Jason Flores. Number 22, Jason Flores. Well, well-designed play that time, Bobby. You saw the bootleg. Yeah, there you go. They had Flores coming across the middle. Yeah, he starts from the left side. He's lined up like a like a slot receiver, basically real close to the tight end because he's been in there blocking the entire time. And there's all the linebackers. Everybody sucks up, and then he just releases and crosses the field. Call it a little backslider. And uh, there you go. Extra point attempt coming up here by number 42 of the Rangers. There's a snap boy penalty flag here. So no play as we'll get the call. And they're going to get a false start against Naaman Forrest. Five yard penalty. Replay the try. So the extra point attempt will come a little bit further back. That's what you do, though. You, you get these guys, these linebackers, the safeties, everybody comes up to support that run. And then you do a little bootleg pass out of that and uh there's these your receivers wide open boy that uh -oh. ball is blocked and there's a lot of field out here for Saxe if they can get it all right so here we go that is number 32 that's picked it up he's got one man to beat oh, oh. oh and he gets tripped up what great effort right there boy and if he would have picked that up cleanly bobby i think he's all the way to the house for the two points Boy, that was a high snap of watch. If he can scoop it up right here, I think he's there. But yeah. as it turns out, he picks it up, comes down the sideline. You're going to see him right here. That's yeah, J.J. Hunt running with the ball. 
And I think he just gets tripped up by the block, actually. Yeah, I, agree I think with you. he has the momentum. I think he was going to outrun the defender, and his own man comes over to help support him, and I think that's what tripped him up. Yep. I believe you're correct. So that extra point attempt is no good. A high snap that time. Here comes a look at that touchdown one more time. Look, everybody comes up, and then all of a sudden he just backslides all the way across from the left to the right. Beautiful play design. And they really set it up. The coaches set that play up they did. because they kept trying to run it, run it, run it, and then they just went ahead and did that bootleg pass. So the extra point attempt, of course, no good as it was blocked. It was a high snap that time. A holder did the holder did a good job to just grab that ball, but again, obviously gave Saxy time to come across and block it. So our score is six to nothing here. Name it forced on top. Just about at the halfway point of the first quarter. And another pooch kick is going to be fair caught at around the 29-yard line, and that's where the Mustangs will take over first and 10. I wonder why they have to fair catch that. I mean, he had so much room to run. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him, and I think you catch that, you take off running. See what you, you only can have get, yeah. one or two guys to – I mean, it's, so, it's such a fast play. Uh, you know, nobody has to – time to set up the wedge or anything and come down on you it's, it's like you miss one or two guys and you're gone and you're gone yep mustang offense back on the field there's the quick throw out the catch is made that is number one he's got some room out here and a good block outside that was jack krill supplying the block number one Cortland scott with the catch quick throw it's what you want to do, and but you it, to execute this play, you have to gr have great blocking. And you can see number seven there, Jet Creel, does a great job of setting up that screen. Six on the play. They're going to hand the ball off this time to Akana up the uh, middle, and he's going to be close to the first down. They may mark him about half a yard shy. So it looks like it is going to set up a third down and one. And Akana comes out a little bit limping as well. Good for a yeah, just game. right up the middle. They send Jet Krill trying to screw the uh, up the defense there, and, and uh, he goes in motion, hand the ball to Kuna straight up the middle, and, boy, it just didn't work for him. Hand off. Then they did give him the first down on that last carry, so this was actually first down and 10, a gain of two yards that time by the new running back on the field. That is number 22. Kalise Harris. He's in there giving Akana a little break, but boy, he's a big kid. You give him the ball, he got some weight to push around. Well, that was a good throw that time, and wide open was number five. That's Kalik Locker. They really want to get him going, Bobby. He is one of the really talented receivers for the sexy squad and that's just a quick hitter yeah he's he's caught the ball 11 times 143 yards coming into the game two touchdowns but well he's their possession receiver when they need good hands they throw it to him back in name and territory the handoff once again to number 22 that is harris the ball comes loose but i think they're going to call him down so a gain of about two yards So we've seen the ball on the turf quite a bit. Again, the, the play was ruled dead, but you can see him right here. Well, I'm, I'm not, not sure <laughs> either. I don't think he was down. Yeah, he but. was on top of the name and player, so they may have got away with one there, but it does remain in Saxe's possession. They're going to hand it off once again. This time he's in a lot of trouble. Marcus Dill with the initial pressure, and then they're going to tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. That was number 10, Isaiah Cunning, with the big tackle on the running back. Yeah, deal 6'6", 305, and he comes in there. He gets loose from the, on the defensive end spot. See, see right there? And then he just starts putting the pressure on him. And then when you have your running back running all around in the backfield, it just gives too much time for that swarm of green to come in and make the tackle. Looking for a quick throw, and the catch is made once again. Kalik Lockett, that is a nice play and a gain of about 16 yards. So that will move the chains. Lockett with his second catch on this drive. Well, Jaden, uh, Braden George is really throwing the ball nice. Look, he, he looks left and then throws right. That's a tough play. He didn't stare his receiver down, so they didn't know to go to him. They couldn't read 
the quarterback's eyes. He's looking left, throws right. Very nice play. They're coming out quickly as well. Another handoff. Boy, nice big hole that time up the middle. And good room for Harris once again. He's going to gain about eight yards on the play. Well, they keep filling that ball to Harris, and he's going to make people hurt. They're going to start wanting to get out of his way if they don't gang tackle him. He's just so big. You can't let him get to the second level and start hitting defensive backs. Second down and two. They're going to hand it off once again to Harris. He's pushing his way forward. I think he's going to have enough for the first down. They've got him right at the chain, so that should be the yardage needed. Yeah, they're going to move him right now. So another first down here for the Mustangs, and they're driving. Yeah, he wasn't going down either. <laughs> he never did hit the turf. Come out for a quick break, and the new running back on the field is Jacob Dillard. Here's a look at that last one. Yeah, just strong running. There's a snap. George with the handoff to Dillard, who is now in the game, and he's not able to get away from big number 56. And, of course, Marcus Dill with the tackle. Dill's made his presence known here early in the game. Yeah, when you're 6'6", 305, uh, you're going to have to double-team him all night long. And he's just been able to get in the backfield and – what, he's do, what he does good is he, he kind of moves in towards the tackles and so he can help support the run, but he's also staying outside so you can't beat him outside, and, and he's, uh, he's really good at it. And off to Diller trying to get outside. Boy, he's got a lot of green jerseys headed that direction. The flow was there for the Rangers, and they're able to tackle him after a gain of maybe one. Big play coming up here for Saxe. Third down and 11. Second down, 11. Correction, third down, 11. So big play here for the Mustang offense. There's a snap play action. Looking to throw. George steps up. He throws. And that oh. ball is picked off. Coming the other way. Number two for the Rangers, Ivan Garcia. And he is knocked out of bounds around the uh, 39. Boy, the second turnover of the game for the Mustangs. Well, I see what Brandon George saw. He sees his guy crossing over the middle, running the post. He looks open, but Garcia just, you see that, just breaks on the ball and makes a wonderful play right there and really just saves Naaman Force a big play, not only for the touchdown or, an extra, or a field goal, but it gives them the ball back down on the 39-yard line, 38-yard line. So great return as well. Yeah, it's young quarterback will learn as it looked like Bobby he was staring at his receiver the whole time and that gives those defensive backs the ability to kind of kind of read those eyes and come across and you see as you said Ivan Garcia makes a great read on it in the interception Rangers first down handoff to number six that is Elijah Masiwi back in the game and a nice little gain of about six yards for him gain, gain of six on the play second down four Inside of a minute to go here in the first quarter. Name and Forrest on top, six to nothing. There's a snap. They're going to hand the ball off, trying to get outside. And boy, hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped for about a two yard loss. So defense is stepping up here for both teams. That was number plus throws it. And just out of the reach of his intended receiver, number three, Dylan Turner. The Rangers are going to have to punt it away here. You didn't give your defense uh, that much time to rest, did you? <laughs> they never got a first down. Uh, it's just a three, a quick three and out. Yeah, and I'll tell you, good job by the Saxe defense. Again, you know, the Mustangs were driving there on offense and had the second turnover of the game. And, boy, the defense did their job, Bobby, to hold them to a three and out. So the offense got to get the ball once again here. Yeah, those two defensive ends, both sides, really did a great job of stringing the plays out, disrupting the plays. And there was just nothing there for Naaman Forrest. They're going to have to call another timeout because they don't. They don't have enough players in. Yeah, play clock down uh, to zero. So there comes your penalty. They're going to just going to go ahead and uh, take that delay of game. They'll move it back five yards and punt it versus, you know, using that second time out. That's the second time we've seen this on their punt. 
Fourth down. Fourth down. On their punting team, they, they don't have their personnel. They've had two weeks to work on, on special teams, and we've seen two special teams plays for Naaman Forrest, and both times they had to take a timeout on one on the punt and now a uh, delay a game. So fourth down and 12 for the Rangers after the five-yard penalty. Number seven, Jack Krill back to return this one. The kick is away, boy. A little bit of pressure there. Krill's going to just signal everybody to get out of the way. It's going to take a name and forced roll out of bounds around the 32, and that's where the Mustangs will come back on offense. Takes but not nice until, bounce. yeah, not until we come back from break. As we have hit triple zeros on the scoreboard, that is the end of the first quarter with our score. Name and four, six, Saxy zero. Pretty good first quarter of play. Saxe, of course, had the two turnovers, Bobby. And that's, you know, hurting them at this point. Name and force on top six to nothing. But the Mustang offense back on the field now to try to see if they can get things going. In a big game for both of these teams. to send Krill in motion. There's a snap, fakes the handoff. Quarterback's going to keep it to the outside. He's got a little bit of room out here. Sidesteps one tackle, runs out of bounds around the 45. That's going to be a gain of about 14 yards and a first down. Yeah, it's very nice. I mean, that's the first time we've really seen him take off run in this game, and he does run it every once in a while. He, he's uh, got 27 rush, 109 yards coming into the game, a touchdown on the ground, but he's got a lot of speed right there. Uh, it's a big weapon to have. And the ball off to number 28, trying to come outside to the right around in. He's going to pick up about four yards. That is Jacob Dillard. A designed run right there to the outside. You said Jet Creel comes in and does a little crack back on the end right here. You see him coming right there. So he meant to bounce it out. That was the, that was the plan of the play. And that uh, turned out pretty good for him. Snap handoff to Dillard coming to the left side. He's going to be tripped up wow. behind the line of scrimmage. That is number 24 for the Rangers that comes up to make the stop. Xavier Avila. There to make the stop. He's playing that defensive end spot, but man, just able to get away from his guy and make a great tackle right there. It looked like they had a lot of room to run. Uh, so he's able to get that shoestring and save a big run there. So loss of two, it's going to set up third down and eight now for the Mustangs. Snap to George, he's going to roll to his right, looking to throw it. Here comes some pressure, he throws it. Boy, that was an ill-advised throw. Pretty good coverage out there. It's going to be fourth down for the Mustangs. Well, if he could have lifted that ball a little bit, they had Jet Krill running free. See right number seven? Boy, he just has it. If he could just lifted that ball up just a little bit. Krill's running way back there deep. By itself. Dylan Turner going deep. For the so Mustangs bring the punt unit back on the field. King in punt formation. Rangers going to have one back to return it. Looks like he has a player coming on late They're as well. They're going to have problems too. They're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah, they sure are. Got a delay of game before that, it looks like, unless they're going to give the timeout first. Yeah, it looks like they do. Both teams having a hard time with personnel on their punting. So we'll keep it here as we head for the first used timeout for the Mustangs. So pretty good first quarter so far, Bobby. Again, really the, the biggest, you know, uh, thing in the game, I guess, thus far, the two turnovers for the Mustangs. Mustangs offensively have more yards, yes. more total yards than Naaman, but those two two turnovers have been killer. They have, and, and also Naaman had a great drive. Uh, that one first drive, they were just able to run up the middle of the field over and over and over, 
and uh, Saxe didn't have an answer. And for and then Perales runs that little bootleg out of that and, and scores the touchdown. But outside of that one drive, really, uh, they've not done a whole lot. Right, and of course that one drive came off of the Saxe fumble, fumble, right? And so Naaman had great field position. So again, didn't have a, a long way to go. Now, as you said, it was a great drive. Here's the snap as we're back from timeout. The kick is away. No pressure put on the uh, punter there, boy. It's going to take a bounce. Chase Naaman's return man back inside is 10. Uh, Going to have mask. a penalty flag. Yeah, I think you're right, Bobby. Face mask there. That was number three for the Rangers on the return, Dylan Turner. So the ball is going to be at about the 11-yard line, but I think you're right, Bobby. They're going to get the benefit of a 15-yard face mask penalty, and that should put the ball around the 26. Foul. Base map. On the kicking team. 15 yards added to the end of the kick. First down. So you heard the 15 yard face mask penalty as we mentioned. So we'll give him a first down at the 26. Rangers back on offense, having a six to nothing lead. We've got 1034 remaining in the half. Here's a look at the replay. You'll be able to pick up this face mask right coming up right there. Right there, yep. And a penalty flag comes out as the ball is snapped. No play is probably a procedure All call stars, against Naaman Forrest. 54 offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. So the five-yard penalty called against Naaman Forrest. We'll move the ball back to the 21, set of a first down and 15 for Naaman. There's a snap, the handoff to Isaiah oh Cunning, and boy, another penalty flag, and again, this has got to be a procedure because they're not letting the play continue. That's going to be five more against Naaman Forrest. Start, number 19 of the offense, five-yard penalty. Boy, that's got to make Coach Perales just livid over there on the side. There's a look at him right there. That's back-to-back -back illegal procedure penalties. So that's moving your offense back, you know, five yards each time. Yeah, it's hard to get 10 yards, much, le much less when you have to get 20. 20, exactly. First down and 24, name it for us. There's the snap. This time, no penalty flags, at least initially. Quick throw out. Boy, that was in a tight space right there. He was looking for Dylan Turner, and, and Turner had it in his hands, Bobby, just not able to hold on to it. It was really tight. I mean, there was guys all around him. He's watching him all the way. There, there is good defensive play right there by number 45. He was able to break that pass up. Avion Brown. Second down and 20. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off. Coming to the right side. I believe that was number 10 Cunning with the run. Not much there to the right. A gain of maybe two yards. We'll give him three on the play. Out to the 19. So that's going to set up third down and 17. Yeah, it, it just puts you in a bad situation when you, when you have a first and 20 inside your own territory. And, uh, you know, you don't want to sit back and take a long uh, passing, reading long time because that defensive for Saxe will get to you in a hurry. So it's really good just right here to try to pick up half of it maybe. Give yourself some room to punt. See if the Mustangs bring some defenders. Perales being pressured. He's going to roll out. He's going to throw it down the sideline, just throw it away out of bounds, and they're just going to punt. So not a bad decision there for the sophomore quarterback as he chased out of the pocket there, Bobby, and just threw it away. Yeah, just no one there. I mean, I, you look down the field, and you didn't see any uh, receivers really get open either. They had the crossing guy going across and hoping that he would get loose, but uh, he had great coverage on him. There was just no one to throw to. So the Mustangs should get pretty good field position out of this one as Jack Krill stands right at midfield. There's a low snap, but the punter able to grab it. Here comes a little bit of pressure, but Krill's going to be able to return. Oh, he called a fair catch at the 49. 
Well, well I thought he had some running room I did to too. Go. Yeah, absolutely. But he does elect for the fair catch, and so the Mustang offense with good field position to start this drive. They're going to start in Ranger territory at the 49. There's a snap and the handoff up the middle, or the fake handoff, hey. pardon me, and the quarterback keeps it. That is George. He is going to pick up the first down at the 35-yard line. That is a nice gain of 14 yards. Hey, when you could when you could trick people up here looking down on that RPO where you kind of fake handoff, look, it even got the defensive end, and that is a perfect read by George. That's what you want. You, if that defensive end comes down and hits your running back, you pull it and take off on the outside, and he played it perfect. There's a snap. George throws it out quickly. The catch is made. And then a big hit. A penalty flag comes out late. Well, it was a nice throw and catch that time to Kendrick Hanks. And again, just a, just a quick hitter. But we will check the flag here. It may go against the Mustangs. Here's the old holding call. Repeating first down. Zip it out there so quick. Oh, right there, you get the holding by number 13. Trying to help you guy out. Just got to keep those hands in. So first down and 20 now for the Mustangs. The ball back at the 45-yard line. There's a snap to George. He's going to hand it off this time. Boy, breaking a couple of tackles is the big running back, number 22, still in the game for the Mustangs. That is Khalees Harris. Another good run for him. He's going to gain a nine yards, so got most of the penalty yardage back. Well, he's just a strong runner. It took three of them to pull him down, and that's what you want. You want to be able to hand that ball to somebody that really punishes the defense. And off to Harris once again. Boy, he's got a lot of running room, Bobby. And then look at him still going inside the 30 before he's finally pushed back. They're going to mark him at the 29. Well, that's what you know what they the your teammates will start rallying around that effort and before long if he keeps running like this and not going down you're going to start seeing it see all the linemen that kind of stop well they're going to start going and pushing for him and start to help him out and uh, give him a little nudge because he's working hard so third down and four here they're going to fake the handoff oh and the, boom a tackle on the play in the backfield and Boy, that time George probably should have handed that one off. And so that's going to be a loss of a yard, set up a fourth down and five. And boy, just a great play by number 53 that time, Ivan Thomas. Thompson. Yeah, boy, he just comes in there and just beats his man one on one and makes a huge play. So four down, but the Mustangs keep the offense on the field here. There's the snap. Rolling to his right as George throws it out. It's a catch, but I think he's going to be a yard short of the first down. Yep, they're going to mark it at the 26. He needed the 25. That's a turnover on downs. Yeah, your, your receiver has to go past that line, that first down line. You can't catch it in front of it. See Coach Barron's there just shaking his head. And a good throw by George. But as you said, Bobby, you've got to, as the receiver, get enough yards to get across the uh, marker there. So one yard shy, pretty good attempt there, but a turnover on downs to the Rangers. It's a great defensive stance by Naaman Forrest. I mean, that's what you want for your defense. You were able to go out there and execute. Makes the handoff, quarterback's gonna throw it away there. I think that was a busted play. We had that motion coming across, and Perales had a couple of options there, Bobby. He could have handed it off to the running back or the motion man and didn't hand it off to either and then just threw it away. What's yeah, the replay he here? It's a little confusion. Like, Uh-oh, now what? Yep. And he's really fortunate to not get a, an illegal man downfield. His linemen were all pushing up like it was a running play. Second down to 10 for the Rangers. Just inside of seven minutes to go in the first half. Name enforced on top six to nothing. There's a snap. Morales looking to throw it. He throws it out. Oh, that ball's almost 
picked off. It was in and out of the hands of the attended receiver, number four, Dominique Hall. That ball a little behind Hall, the throw was, and boy, almost coming up with the pick there was number 15. They try to set a little pick play with the receivers. They have one receiver going in, which he throws it to Hall, which is number four, and they had their slot receiver doing an out, trying to pick those defensive backs, uh, but it just didn't work out. You got to it's hard to execute that without causing a pass interference or some type of blocking play. And Saxe was just able to stay on their man. So third down and 10 now for the Rangers. And I believe Coach Perales is going to call a timeout here. And he does. That is their second charge timeout of the half. We'll, we'll take a quick break and be right back. Our score, name it for six, Saxe nothing. We'll be back after these messages. We are all connected to something bigger than ourselves. Change one thing, change everything. The things we do today have an extraordinary impact on a child's future. A better child, a better world. GISD has a ripple effect on our community. Every lesson can positively affect our future leaders. We are Garland ISD, impacting lives, changing futures. It's what we call the GISD effect. After the second charge timeout, we are back. 6.54 remaining in the first half. Naming on top six to nothing and facing a third down and 10. Man in motion. They're going to fake the handoff. Perales rolls out to his right. Here comes pressure. He's going to look outside. Well, pretty nice throw that time, Bobby, but in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, number 18 for the Rangers, Marcus Davis. Yeah, Marcus Davis runs about a 12-yard comeback to the outside. He's just running like he's going to go deep, gets a one-on-one, -on -one, breaks back towards the sideline. Perales puts it pretty close to the money, but just good defensive coverage right there by number 16, and, and uh, they were able to break that play up. Brendan George on the defense there. So the Mustangs have two back this time to return it. Here comes the kick. It is a high kick going to be taken, and this one will be returned. Boy, and he is met immediately at the 43-yard uh, line. That was number one for the Mustangs, Cortland Scott, on the return, and you saw two Ranger defenders that are stop him immediately. Yeah, that's what a great punt does for you. Man, that ball was hit way up in the air, and when you do that, your defensive players are able to get downfield and make a stop, and uh, we saw Jet Krill earlier do a fair catch. When he had some room, this time there was no room. Scott got tumbled as soon as he catches the ball. So Mustangs, once again, good field position to start this drive. First and 10. There's a snap to George. He's going to hand the ball off. Bouncing it outside is the running back. Boy, nice run here. Still on his feet. And he's going to be tripped up around the 46-yard line. That is a gain of about 11 yards to uh, number 28 for the Mustangs, Jacob Dillard. It's a nice little bounce out. And you see Naaman just kind of gets their, their feet tangled up right there. But, boy, strong run. He's wanting to get going. He almost breaks it. So the third running back of the first half here for the Mustangs, Jacob Dillard, a nice run there. There's a snap. They're going to hand it off to him again to the right side. Cuts it outside. Has a little bit of speed across the 40. Loses the football. Uh-oh. And Naaman's got their third turnover of the first half. see him he gets the opportunity to make something happen sophomore but you got to protect that ball that's that's the key that ball's been out on the on the ground a couple of times tonight i think we've seen it uh, three times on the turf yeah credit number one dylan stevens there with the strip you saw him as a turner was you know really kind of facing it right there he just pulls the ball away so great job by Stevens and again name and force offense back on the field there's a snap handoff up the middle Isaiah Cunning well not much there maybe two yards let's give him three on the play Gina on the stop. Gina three on the play. Second down. 
So you see out there number 17, Afili, and then you see number six, Afili. Uh, the two brothers playing defensive end. They're the two bookends, locking it down for Saxe. There's a snap on second down. Boy, Cunning this time breaks through. He's got a first uh -oh. down and more across midfield and finally upended around the 47. That is a big run for Isaiah Cunning. Just a pretty simple play. Straight up the middle. Gets a good block by number 85. We saw a nice stiff arm there as well to get the extra yardage. And first down and 10 now in Saxe territory. Inside of six minutes to go here in the half. There's a snap. Hand off to Cutting. They're going to try the left side. He's got some room out here. As he gets around the defensive end there and picks up another six. Now this is what we were talking about earlier. When they start getting that running game going, it sets up the, th the uh, passing game with Perales. I mean, you get him getting outside and picking up five, six, seven yards per carry. It's going to be hard to stop. Second down and four here for the Rangers. There's a snap. Hand off to the new running back on the field, and he's going to be close to first down yardage, depending on where they mark it. That is number six with the carry, Elijah Masiwi. They're sharing the ball with a lot of different players this game, and usually it's Isaiah Cunning. He gets the ball over and over and over and over, but we've seen a lot of different people carrying the ball tonight. Are going to mark him one yard shy, so third down and one coming up here for the Rangers. They have a timeout call that we do, so a defensive timeout Hello. called by Coach Barron's and the Saxe Mustangs. They want to talk about some things defensively. Why don't we take a quick break with them? We've got 435 remaining in the first half. Our score, name and six, Saxe nothing. The Garland ISD Education Foundation provides resources to support and enrich education for all students in the Garland Independent School District. Every dollar donated helps fund innovative teaching and learning initiatives. Choose today to impact a better tomorrow. For more information and to learn how you can give, visit gisdedfoundation.org. Third down and one for the Rangers as we come back from timeout. Both teams with only one remaining timeout in the half. Big play coming up here. The Mustangs trail six to nothing and certainly want to try to hold the Rangers from scoring anymore. Saxe's had the better offensive numbers here in the first half, Bobby, but they've got three turnovers, and that's what's really kind of taken them out of this ball game while they trail. Yeah, absolutely. You give you put the ball on the ground, lose it a couple of times, and give the other team the opportunity to score, and it and that's where you lose the games. They're down and one as Perales looks to the sideline. They're going to get the uh, signal from the coaching staff. And here we go. There's a snap handed off to Cunning. He's going to have the first down and more all the way to the 30. That's a gain of seven yards. Well, nothing fancy is they needed that one yard. They just handed up the middle to Cunning. Yeah, it's been a great job by that offensive line on this drive. I mean, they've been able to really get their shoulder pads on the defensive players and, and open up the running room. And if number 44, George, doesn't come in there and make that tackle, it could have went the, the, went the distance. Snap to Perales, empty backfield. He's going to throw it out quick. He's got a man. Catch is made and dropped at the five is number 22. Once again for the Rangers, Jason Flores. That's the young man that scored the touchdown and yeah, a great throw. It's a sneaky play because he stays in the slot because he's blocking all the time. This time he just blocks for a second and then releases straight down the middle. And he's got great hands. He's a big ball player, a lot of size. First and goal for the Rangers. The ball at the five-yard line looking to extend the lead. There's a snap. Hand off to Cunning to the left side. Boy, takes a nice Good hit out tackle. there. It looked like there was a little bit of room. And then all of a sudden coming across right there, number 44 for the Mustangs. Boy, a great play by Camden George. Yeah, we've seen him make a lot of tackles tonight already because they keep getting into that backfield. But, boy, that is closing speed right there. 
going downhill, finding your man and, and putting a lick on him. Now their favorite target down here is Flores, though. you got to keep your eye on him. He's had six touchdowns. Most of his touchdowns come right here within the five or six yard line. Keep an eye on him. You'll see him right in the backfield there. Here he comes sneaking across. They throw to him, and you called it, Bobby. Touchdown, Flores. Number 22, Jason Flores. The Seeing just sneak across. Then you get the one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, and it's just too late. There's a look at Flores, the junior receiver for Naaman Force. His second touchdown of the game, Naaman on top 12-0. Extra point attempt coming up here. And that's what's sneaky about them. You know, they run the ball so well, and they throw it when they need to. See, penalty flags come out before the play. That's going to be a procedure call against Naaman Forrest. Ball start on the offense, number 18. Five-yard penalty, replay the try. Well, not only is that a penalty and you have to move back, but you gave away your play. And again, that was a little bootleg pass that they were going to throw, and they found Flores again coming across at the back, back, that backslider play where he starts on the left and goes all the way across. Well, now they're looking for it <laughs> because you just ran it. So you got to change your play. That was one that you had been working on all season. You know, that's your play that you got. And now you, you can't run it. Well, interesting that they go ahead and, and keep the offense on the field to go for two here after the five-yard mark off. We're coming across. They're going to throw it toward him. the end zone, and that ball's tipped away. A ball hung in the air a long time. And the pass falls incomplete. There's a look at number zero, Ivory Chester, that knocked it away. And we'll keep it here. So the extra point or the two-point conversion, no good. And like I said, kind of surprised after the penalty that they didn't just go ahead and kick the kick extra it. point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So 12 to nothing, our score here, name and force. We've got 254 remaining. Boy, a good game here in the first half. You know, again, if you're the Mustangs, you got to look at this first half and say, you know what, we're trailing by 12. But if we, you know, if not for the three turnovers, we, we could probably be ahead in this game. Yeah, Brandon George is actually throwing the ball real well. They're actually running it pretty good. Uh, they've just, they've had a couple of penalties and uh, and then they keep putting the ball on the ground for turnovers with three turnovers. They've scored twice on those two turnovers. That's where the points have come from. So we'll see if the Mustang offense can get things going again. They've got 254 remaining and only one timeout here in the first half. Jason Flores is the story of the game so far. He's got both touchdowns for Damon Forrest. Another pooch kick is going to be called for a fair catch. And well, bobbling the ball there just a little bit, but coming up with it is number 45 for the Mustangs. You know, that was like a, a onside kick. I, yeah, it was. I mean, they, they didn't like pooch kick it to the 30. They, they pooch kick it 10 yards. And I, I think they were uh, setting that up to actually uh, make a play and get the ball back. It's interesting, though, they do that because it's not like Saxe hadn't been able to move the ball. They, they, they have uh, the talent, and they got a big running back, a bruiser running back back there. Yeah, remember the Popacana started the game for the Mustangs, had a couple of big runs, but, you know, came out limping, and we haven't seen him since. And as you mentioned, Bobby, number uh, 22 there, uh, Kalisa Harris, uh, he's done a good job since he's been in the game, and he gets the handoff here. Look at this. Nice spin move, still on his feet. Woo. Taken down inside the 40 of the Rangers. Just because you're big don't mean you can't move and you don't have quick feet. And I, I was saying earlier, you can't keep running that big 215-pound back into the backfield on those uh, defensive backs. They're going to start wanting to get out of his way. And they hand it off to him again, and he gets pushed out of bounds, but stays on his feet. They couldn't get him to the ground. He's got a fun little hop to him, right? He's he's ready to go. Yeah, you get your opportunity, and sometimes that's all it takes. And again, don't know how serious the injury is to Pope Pocana, but we haven't seen him back in the game since that first series. 
Harris has done a great job. Yeah, you, your linebackers and defensive line have got to get their hand on him because if not, those defensive backs just can't keep hitting him. Quick throw out to Jet Krill. Running straight down the seam. He's going to have a first down all the way to the uh, 23. Tell you, the Mustang offense coming out firing here, and they are driving. Jet Krill's always been one of their number one receivers throughout his career with Saxe. This year he's only had, that's his eighth catch of the season. Uh, just not been a part of their passing game, but it's really good to see him catch it. There's a handoff inside to the new running back. That is Jacob Dillard back in the game and gain of about two yards. Well, that's what you got to have. You got to have Marcus Dill come down and make some tackles now. Uh, you can't just keep depending on those one on one tackles with your safeties and your corners. You got to have these big guys that are supposed to stop the run to really get down in there and stop it. Especially right now, you got a minute and 22 seconds left on the clock till halftime. You can't just let them march down the field and score on you. Second down and eight as we approach one minute remaining here in the first half. Hand off to Diller coming to the left. He's going to get nice yards, about six on the carry. He's going to set up third down and short. There's a handoff to Diller. Nice block by the tackle coming around. He's fast and quick. I mean, I like how he just jumps around and makes some moves in there. I believe he's a sophomore. Big play here, 45 seconds and counting in the first half. Third down and three for the Mustangs. They send Krill in motion. Going to run the option, pitch it inside. It's like a, a shuttle pass, so that's going to go, of course, as a pass. It is a first down. It's going to be first and goal at the eight. Yeah, that's a nice little pass. It's pretty safe because if it doesn't work and, and they miss the ball right there, somebody knocks it down, it's not a fumble. It's a pass, so it's a pretty good safe play. And off to Dillard up the middle. He's got room. Touchdown, Mustangs. Boy, what about the answer drive for Saxe? It was 12 to nothing with about a little over two minutes, Bobby. And tell you what, the Mustangs get the ball. They drive it all the way down and get right back in this game. Yeah, that's why we were thinking, why, why do you kick a, an onside kick and give them the ball on the 45-yard line? And, uh, boy, the Mustangs, they're running the swinging gate out here right now. Got... Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah. you know, you know, you, you, you give them the, too much time. There's too much time on the Offense. clock to be running. A... Saxony never had to throw the ball. They had the little shuffle pass to Creel. That's the only pass they ran. They did that whole drive. They just ran it the whole time. And so you think if you would have kicked that ball on down the field, they still wouldn't be in the end zone right now. So we're just about set here for the extra point attempt. Saxy comes out there, and they, they had the swinging gate. Yeah, they did. Out there, and, and I don't think Naaman knew what to do with it. So the extra point coming up here after the procedure call. Boy, another penalty flag comes out. We may be going back the other way. All nope. start. So they do indeed call the false start. So that's going to back up Saxe five more now. Now can your kicker kick this far is the question. You're right at 30 yarder. I was going to say we're about to find out. Number 31 for the Mustangs set to kick. There is the uh, snap. Jet Crow with the hold. I think they got a hand on it, and it is no good. There is a another flag. Yeah, maybe a penalty flag for offside. offside. Oh, here we go. So now we're going to move it back up five. It's nothing, it's nothing like giving your kicker four different tries to uh, <laughs> kick their extra point. So here we go, our third try for the extra point here coming up. There's a snap and hold to Krill. The kick is up. That one looks to be good, and it is good. 
So 20 seconds remaining in the half. Our new score, Damon Forrest 12, Sac C7. We'll be back after these messages. Good game here in the first half. It's 12 7 name and force. We've got 20 seconds remaining on the clock. Both teams with one timeout. Well, what a what a great answer drive, right? It was. There. You know, you could have you could have held your head down and think you're gonna go into halftime, you know, with a with a 12 to 0. Uh, but they come out and they just marched down the field. They just power drove it. No passing, just power drive, power drive, power drive. And it didn't look like Naaman wanted any more of that big running back. Here comes the kick. It is a deep kick this time, and it's going to chase the return man back and go into the end zone for a touchback where the Naaman Force Rangers will take it first and 10 at their 25. Boy, a good game here thus far. Again, who's going to come out on top of this? Remains to be seen a 12 7 contest. We mentioned we're at the you know, really the midway point of district play Got a lot of good things going on the, the big game of course tonight for a lot of people is going to be that Garland Wiley East game Those are the two only remaining undefeated uh, teams in playing district together, play yeah, playing, playing each against other. each other right now It is three to nothing Wiley East as they head to halftime at that game So three nothing Wiley East well, that shows you that those are two good teams that are really equally matched then the other game across the way at Homer B. Johnson Stadium is uh, Rowlett and South Garland currently Rowlett with the lead there. And of course, we saw Lakeview upend Wiley yesterday. So again, you know, District 96A is right at that pivotal point. As you see the handoff here to Cunning, he's going to pick up about nine yards. Again, I don't think either team going to use their timeout here. And we'll probably head to half 12 to 7. Well, of course, I say that, and it looks like Naaman may have Somebody used their final timeout. timeout. Yeah. <laughs> So I stand corrected. Name of Force does use their final timeout. So 13 seconds remaining. We'll keep it here. Second down and one coming up. But as we were mentioning again, you know, we're at about the halfway point. Garland and Wiley East, the only two undefeated. So whoever wins that game is going to be all alone on top of That's District 96A. But then right after that, Bobby, you've got kind of that bunch of, of teams. You know, you've got Lakeview. You've got, you know, these two teams, of course. You've got um, Wiley, who lost yesterday to Lakeview. To and, of Lakeview. course, you got Lakeview. So, interesting it's starting to, second it's half. Starting, it's going to start to uh, filter out. Where you're going to have the bottom half, and you're going to have the top half. And uh, it's, it's starting to see it now. Lakeview looks like they're they're doing pretty good now. And and you got Garland. They're, they're showing that they're really the team that we all thought they were going to be playing really good against uh, Wally East. Browse looking to throw it. He's got to scramble out to the right. He's just going to throw that one away. And we are down to about six seconds remaining here in the half. It's interesting. Wasn't there only seven seconds left? You may be right. I don't remember. I was, thought there was around 10 seconds. Maybe. But OK. Yeah. I was like, well, that was a quick play. Yeah, we got six seconds remaining, so name it Forrest. Perhaps one more play remaining here in the half. Yeah, kind of surprised they didn't just take a knee there and go into the uh, yeah, go into halftime with the you lead. You definitely don't want to throw an interception here and then return it on you. Yeah, they're going to hand it off here. Now to Saxe use their final timeout. They do not. They let the uh, half run out. And that's where we will stand. So a good first half here at Williams Stadium. We've got a lot to be decided in the second half. Our halftime score, name it for us, 12, Saxe 7. We'll be back after these messages on GRS TV.
Back for the start of the third quarter at Williams Stadium. Our halftime score, name and four is 12 and Saxy seven. Pretty good first half that time, Bobby, if you know, in this game. And let's take a look at some of the highlights as we head towards the second half. What a beautiful night here at Williams Stadium as you see both teams take the field. The perfect weather. Real cool. Nice evening. See the name of four squad there. And you see the first handoff here to Isaiah Cunning. Nice run up the middle. When that really got their offense going on that first drive. Of course, that came after that Saxy turnover. And then here comes our first score of the game. Bootleg pass to Flores in the back of the end zone there. First of his two touchdowns. Yeah, put the Rangers up six and nothing. You saw the blocked extra point attempt. As Saxy attempted to return it for, you know, two points. And get upended here down the sideline. So six to nothing at that point. And then Saxy with the throw. Nice throw to Kalik Lockett. And this one just was a perfect read by the safety there, number two. Yeah, Ivan Garcia with the interception for the Rangers. That was the second turnover of the game at that point for the Mustangs. That's the bruiser back right there. I mean, he was just imposing his will tonight. Yeah, Harris, one of his big carries. Again, Popacana got hurt. And then there came a big play on defense for Naaman Forrest. So just a real fun game. It's been a tight one. A lot of uh, a lot of defense tonight. What an onside kick to start the uh, second half here. <laughs> wow. Well, he snagged that out of the air. Very lucky. They they had their hands team uh, prepared right there. That that could have been disastrous. Yeah, an interesting call coming out of the half there as we saw the onside kick attempt by the Mustangs and. Well, it's always one of those, you know, kind of darn if you do, darn if you don't, Bobby, because, you know, if you get it, then it's a great play, right? But now, now it's on the 50. It's yard on the 50, line. exactly, and, right at midfield for here for Naaman. We saw that happen from Naaman. Naaman did this uh, in the second quarter. Saxe got the ball at the 50 yard line, was able to punch it in uh, right with hardly any time on the clock. So the first play of the second half for the Rangers and run up the middle by number six that time. That is Elijah Masiwi. Got a little bit of playing time there in the first half. Had some pretty good runs. And we'll get to some of the first half stats here momentarily. Boom. Boy, he took a big hit right there. Yeah, it was a close half, really. 188 yards for Saxe, 125 total yards for Naaman. And off to Cunning, trying to get outside to the left. He's going to be pulled down. Most all the yards in the first half for Naaman were on the ground. It was 45 passing yards, 80 rushing. And uh, Cunning's had 72 of those 80. Elijah Nwihi had 11 yards. Of course, the two touchdowns came from Perales to Flores in the end zone there. Two touchdowns for Flores. 
He was a receiver on the end of those. Yeah, those are really the two big plays of that first half for the Ranger offense. Here we go on third down. Hand off uh -oh. to Cunning. He's got some room down the left sideline. That's going to be a touchdown name in Forrest. You keep 40. feeding it to him. You keep feeding it to him. Finally, he breaks one. 44-yard touchdown run for Isaiah Cunning. He was pulling guards, boom, everybody hit somebody. Cunning's a big back, but man, look at his speed. There's nobody gonna catch him. 44 yard touchdown run and Namath Force has extended the lead once again, back to two scores. That puts him over a hundred yards. And they're gonna keep the offense on the field. Looks like they're gonna go for two once again. We were just talking that he had had 12 attempts, 72 yards. Boy, you add 44. 44 to it. There's a quick throw. They were looking for that same play earlier, this time to Ivan Garcia. He's not able to come up with it. So another extra point attempt goes awry. We'll keep it here. Look at Isaiah Cunning there. He is pumped up on the sideline. And Bobby, we talked about it. You know, Coach Barron's, you know, took that risk coming out of the half with the onside kick. And again, if Saxe recovers it there, they're in great shape. But as it turns out, midfield, and Cunning did the rest. Yeah, it's 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 a dang if you do and dang if you don't. But I mean, I don't know. It, it's a really risky play, especially coming straight out of the half uh, to go ahead and do that because you know, you're putting yourself at risk, given a, a team that you're already behind on uh, short short field position there. And, boy, you know, if you're not having to throw the ball or anything, though, and you're just running straight up the middle and you break one like that, it doesn't matter if it was on the 20 or the 50. He was gone. He was gone. It was a great run and nice blocking up front. Bobby, you mentioned they had, a you know, a pulling guard coming across there that kind of get, got that kick out block and allowed Cunning to get inside, and then he did the rest from there. Yeah, he, he can read the hole so well. and uh, But he didn't really get touched too much either. But, you know, it's, it's pretty impressive to see such a big back uh, his size uh, move his feet so fast. I mean, there ain't nobody going to catch him out there on that field. You mentioned it, but just to reiterate, 14 carries, 118 yards, and that touchdown now. As you see the pooch kick come down to number four for the Mustang, Santana Quinn, and still pushing the pile wow, there. There's no we whistle go. yet. We've got a scrum going. Yep. Man, I tell you what, nice return out to the 44. So the Mustangs need to come out quick here and assert themselves offensively. Again, as you mentioned, they had 188 total yards of offense, so not a bad first half of offense for the Mustangs. They really need to keep that going. More importantly, they need to secure the ball here in the second half. Illegal yeah. formation. Five yards added to the end of the kick. First down. Yeah, they, they had 188 total yards. 127 of it was on the ground. So, again, mostly everything they've done today has been on the ground. They've had a great running game going. George is 6 of 8 70, uh, for 75%. So he's throwing the ball good, 61 yards. He had that one interception, and then they've had two fumbles. So those three uh, you know, turnovers has been the difference in this game because outside of that, they've really controlled offensively the ball. There's a snap. George going to throw it out to number one. That is a, a Cortland Scott with the catch. And well, not a whole lot there. A gain of maybe a yard, but that's one of those plays you saw the motion into the backfield and then he turns on the snap and they throw it back to him. Watch this. Yeah, they just want to get their the ball into some fast people's hands is really what they wanted to do. Get him, get outside, spread the ball around, make that defense respect all the players on the field. Second down and nine. This time the handoff goes to the right side. That is number 22, Harris, back in at running back. He's going to pick up about five, set up a third down and four. Harris has been the workhorse. He's That's his 10th carry right there for about 50 yards on the night. But he's been impressive, too. He, he's been able to move his feet and, and really punish some defensive backs out there for Naaman. They don't want to get in his way any longer. Big third down and four. They're going to 
hand it off to Harris again, trying to get to the left side. And boy, the Ranger defense just strings it down the line of scrimmage there and tackles him for no gain. It's going to be four down. I would imagine Saxon got to keep the offense on here. Well, I stand corrected, though. They're going to bring the punt unit on. Look at Avili just power through big number 65. And he has he has a big offensive lineman on him the whole time, and he still is able to just manhandle rush through there and make a tackle on their biggest back. So four down to four punt unit on the field. A penalty flag comes out. If this is on name and force, that's going to be an automatic first down. We'll check the flag. But again, if it's an offside call, and it came from the linesman there, so we'll see. Austin Phillips down the ball for the Mustang. Ball is marked dead at the 10. Coach Rell, if you want to catch on. Illegal formation. So it does indeed go against the Mustangs, and I would imagine they were going to make him kick it again. Yeah, because that was a really good kick. It yes, went all it the way was. down to the 10 yard line. Well, I'm shocked that they're going to decline this, but. Hmm. But yeah, Naaman's going to start here first and 10 from the 10. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised too, because, you know, it, in high school football, anything can go wrong in a punt. I mean, they could be a, over, a snap over their head. Right. You can block it. Uh, they could shank it off their foot and go out, you know, at the line of scrimmage. Yep. But that punt was a really beautiful punt. And inside, right at the 10-yard line, yeah, I, I think I would be uh, having them repunt that thing. On the kick team. Yeah, pretty oh, interesting yeah, there. Kick, first down. So they're going to mark the five yards at the end of the uh, – the end of the play, but still, you're at the 15-yard line again. I would, I would have made him re-kick, but Naaman's going to put the offense on the field, first and ten. This time, empty backfield for Perales. Three-step drop, throws it across the middle, and was just not looking for the ball that time. Was Flores and passes incomplete. That was an interesting play right there. It was just a. We haven't seen him in empty backfield formation. They just really spread the, the defense out right there, but I don't know. It was just a quick pass. Not really like the quarterback there. Flores usually, he, he, he it puts it right on Flores' number. There's a snap on second down. Hand off to the running back, and he had gain of about two yards so it's going to set up third down and long here i believe that was cunning with the uh, carry and it indeed was cunning and look at the sexy defense yeah. there <laughs> they're, they're like man we've got to get a stop right here they some big boys man they 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 know how to play football out there Well, here's a big play here for the Mustang defense. Third down and nine. Empty backfield again. Snap and Perales quick throw. Catch is made. That is Flores' his favorite target. That's exactly the play that they tried before. Just spread everybody out. He was on the left side before when the pass was just a really an incomplete pass. This time the same thing. Gets out there in single coverage, and Flores is just so big. He can make that little outside move, get the defender on his right hip, and then post pattern it. And that ball, like I said, Perales usually puts that right between the 22. Yeah, and he did right there. That's a great throw from Perales. And again, just that quick slant, as you said, Bobby, from Flores, and that's a first down out across the 30 to the 31. Well, a little bit of contact there, but nope call is made as you saw number two Ivan Garcia when he came out of the break got hit just a little bit but they don't call anything on that and the pass falls incomplete yeah, that's a pretty good 33 reaches out and just knocks the ball down that was a nice play by Sean DeWalt it's interesting that we've seen uh, this different offensive formation you know he was only had six complete six or seven passes that whole first half, and all of a sudden they've come out throwing the ball. 
or handing off to Cunning, and that's another gain of about eight yards. And we're right up the middle, again, nothing fancy. It's just straight handoff, and Cunning gets what he can. Just a little, did you see a little delay, 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 then takes off running. And, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but those are instincts and quick feet that really makes the defense hesitate. And then all of a sudden he goes up and gets an extra two or three yards off of that hesitation move. Third down and two here for the Rangers. There's a snap. They're going to hand it off to Cutting. Uh -oh. Got a lot of room out here to the left. Makes one man miss. He will pick up the first down. He falls forward. Close to the 45, that's going to be a gain of five more, and it will move the chains. He's starting to really collect a lot of yards now. Yeah, there is a penalty flag, however. And that is going to go against Naaman Four, so that play is going to come back. What they call holding? Look like a procedure call or form illegal formation. Illegal formation. There, there you go. go. So the five-yard penalty will move the uh, ball back to the 34, set up a third down and seven. Empty backfield once again for the Rangers. There's a snap. Five-step drop this time. He's got a lot of room out here. He's going to tuck it and run. He's going to slide down. And there comes the penalty flag. That's going to be a late hit. That will give Name and Force an automatic first down. Boy, just not a smart play. He goes ahead and gives himself up. We had Marcus Davis just slanting across the middle. I thought he was going for him. He was wide open. But this is going to pay off for him. Personal too. foul. They did. By the So that he was going to be short of the first down, but that personal foul, of course, gives him the automatic first down. And boy, that is a tough penalty if you're a Saxy Mustang, as you were to put him in punt formation. These guys, they don't even wear pads over their knees anymore. It's like they just wear short, short pants. You can see they he he slides and they they go over the top of him. So first and 10 now in Mustang territory. There's a the snap. Hand off to Cunning to the left side. I believe that was the same play they scored the touchdown on. This time the Mustang defense there to make the stop after a gain of only two. I tell you, that, that, that offensive line, they, they're able to just pull their guards and have those lead blockers. You know, it doesn't look like they have anybody. It looks like all the offensive line just blocking the man in front of them, but they're not. Watch these guys. See the number 53, all these guys coming from left to right. They do that. They just kind of blindside the defender, and, and Cunning just does, you know, finds the gap to run in, just and like that one. Yeah, he found it again, as you said, Bobby, and that's going to be another first down run of about seven, maybe eight yards. This offensive line is hustling. George on the stop. C-72 pull, 85 pull, everybody's pulling. Got Marcus Dell out there at left tackle. He's pushing people a couple yeah, he, yards he's down. He's a little guy, though. He, you know, no, he's, he's not a good point. The little, little guys out there on that offensive line. First down and 10 at the 35 now for the Rangers as we approach five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Here comes another big run. Well, you saw the patience that time out of the uh, name and force runner, Ivan Garcia. He let the, the hole kind of take place there and then went right through it. Yeah, do you see how that left side of that offensive line all powered down towards the middle, and then they have the guard and tackle from the right side of the line coming over and trap blocking. And when you do that, it's just opening that hole up. And uh, you got to have these big linebackers to fill that. If those linebackers are just a little bit late, uh, Name of Force is going to have a you know some running room. Second down and two. Got a penalty flag out. That's going to be a delay of game. It's Name of Force, so that's going to back them up five more. 
Well, at least momentarily helps out the Saxy defense. You'll see number 85, Jordan Johnson. He's in that slot position. That's that's where they usually have him lead blocking. He's the one that'll pull from right to left. You see him right there in that slot. Here he comes. Yep, exactly. Cunning and springs him up the middle. Nice move, and he is going to have a first down and 10 at around the 13-yard line. Another big run for Cunning, and he is having a big game. Yeah, they don't see Jordan Johnson coming. See, here he is, and then boom, he, he meets that linebacker. Cunning's just running right in behind him. Isaiah Cunning there on your screen, having a big game here for Name and Force. They are driving once again, and the Mustangs cannot afford another touchdown here for Name and Force. There's a snap handoff to Cunning again to the left side. He falls forward and gains about four on that carry, maybe five. Defense tackle, Core Walls is actually the one that had to grab a hold of him, and he just drags him. I mean, he's not a little guy. When your defensive tackle is the one that you're pulling around, uh, you know that you got a strong running back. And then they'll switch him up, and all of a sudden you got number two in there running. He's smaller, quicker, Stevens. There's a snap, handoff coming to the left side. He's got some room out here. That is Garcia. He's going to be pushed out of bounds, however, before he crosses the end zone. Going to mark him out at the four-yard line. That'll be close to a first down. Yeah, you give it out here to... Oh, they just thought he could get, get to that outside. Got to give credit right there to defense. Hey, they, they strung it out. Third down and one as he is about a yard shy of the first down. Pretty awesome. You see Ivan Garcia out there running, play, you know, being the running back. He's also been out there in defense. He's the one that got the interception earlier. He's playing both ways. A lot of these guys play both offense and defense. They don't get a, a break. They got to be in real good shape. There's the handoff. Cutting outside, spin, a couple of spin moves. I don't know that he got it, Bobby. He's going to be marked inside the four, but it is going to be fourth down about half a yard. And let's see what the Rangers do here. I would imagine they're going to keep the offense on the field. Yeah, with that short of a distance. Yeah, you, you kick the extra, you, you kick a three, a field goal here, you go up 20, you go up to 21. You know, you're up 14, two scores there. I don't know. They, they've been able to get seven, eight yards per carry. I think you go ahead and take the chance that yep. you're going to, you know, you've already, you got stopped on two carries in a row. It's going to be hard to stop these guys three carries in a row right up the middle. There's a snap. Hand off to Cutting to the right side. He goes into the end zone for the touchdown. And Naaman Forrest has extended the lead. This is when the coaches become uh, geniuses. You know, if, if they didn't get it, everybody would be complaining, but they, they do. They pop it off the outside right here. Boom. You've been running everything on the inside. You get these defensive ends off crashing, crashing down, yep. and then all of a sudden Cunning's popped outside. Boy, Cunning continues his big night. 22 carries, 166 yards, and two touchdowns. Bobby's averaging seven and a half yards a carry. Just a big game for him, and the extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So our new score at Williams Stadium with 142 remaining in the third, Damon Forrest 25, Saxe 7. We'll be back after these messages on GRS TV. One forty-two remaining here in the third. Name it forced on top, twenty-five to seven. After another touchdown run by Isaiah Cunning, 
Again, Cunning with a big game, 22 carries, 166 yards, and those two touchdowns. So, Naaman now with the 18-point lead, and Saxe's got their work cut out for him. Game not over. There's still a lot of time left. And, of course, the Mustangs have all three timeouts remaining, but they now trail by 18 points, so that's three scores. Offense has to get back to work here for the Mustangs. Well, Isaiah Cunning's having a good night, isn't he? He is. Uh, they're really putting together a really good team effort, though. You know, Prowlis is throwing the ball. He's really controlling the, the tempo of the game. And that big offensive line are really starting to control the defense of Saxe. And uh, the running game is really starting to pick up. We've seen two consecutive drives. This one started on the 10-yard line. Well, penalty to the 15, but that was a big-time drive all the way down the field. Boy, low kick, and it's bobbled on the ground there, but picked up. And here we go. That's number nine for the Mustangs with a nice return, Kendrick Hanks. Let's see if they can get the offense going here. As again, they're down by 18 points. Well, when you're when you're naming and you've, if you've got the lead here like you do, what you want to do is keep everything in front of you. You, you know that they're going to have to come out and start throwing the ball, and George can throw it. He's got a great arm. He puts good spin on the ball. So what you're going to have to do is just keep everything in front. If Saxe does score, you want it to be a long, methodical drive that eats a, put a lot of the clock up. Oh, oh lose a, a lost ball on the play. Naaman thinks they've got their fourth turnover, and they do. Boy, a big turnover in this game, and Marcus Davis comes up. That was Dillard once again. That's his second fumble of the game. Boy, Taylor Green really puts his helmet right on the ball. Boy, that is something the Mustang offense could ill afford to do, not only turn the ball over for the fourth time, but you give Damon Force great field position again. Boy, a little bit of confusion here. The Rangers going to have to call timeout. There was only four seconds remaining on the play clock, so they do use a timeout. Why don't we keep it here? Well, it's going to be a, a critical time for the Mustangs here if they want to come back. And we've been talking a little bit about the standings. Why don't we take a look at what we've got here tonight? Again, these teams coming in. And here we go. Here's our District 9-6A standings. And, boy, big win for Lakeview yesterday as we talked about. You know, they had that big win over Wiley, Wiley to drop yep. them to 2-1. and one. Lakeview now sitting at 3-1. and one. Garland at 3-0, and, oh, and you got Wiley East at 2-0. and oh. Again, They're those two teams tonight. playing right now. And it, right now it's 17-7 Wiley East as they're about to head to the fourth quarter. So, again, whoever wins that game will be on top. But we'll look at the standings here. And you can see where Naaman Force sits kind of right in the middle of the pack. Saxe right below them at 1-2. and two. So, again, this is a big game for these two teams. Yeah, Naaman, Naaman wins this one. They go to 2-1, and they're right in the top. So it's going to start separating the top half from the bottom half pretty quick here. Yeah, usually what you see about midway through. We'll talk more about the district race here throughout the rest of this game as you see the handoff come outside to the left. A pretty nice gain on that play of seven yards. Gain of seven on the play. Well, just a quick runner right there, huh? Six. Now, yeah, that was the see we once against Elijah, and he's been able to, to spell you know, Isaiah Cunning tonight. Yeah, that's his fifth carry for about 20 yards. So, you know, Cunning's getting most of them. He's had 22. Well, that time the Mustangs are going to get him in the backfield, however. So got away from the initial hit, but then number 17, Cheeto Feely able to drop him for a loss, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Watch, there's the initial yeah. pressure, 26 there for the Mustangs. Well, they just came in so fast. It, it's it's so weird when you see one back have all the success, you put another back in, and it's not the same, but it's not like it was the back's fault. It's just like two consecutive carries. There was a big penetration from the de defense who was able to get in there quick on him. So third down and 10. We are in the closing seconds here of the third quarter. There's a snap. Prowlis with all sorts of time. Now it breaks down. He's going to throw. He's got a wide open receiver out here. 
I don't think he made the first down. I think he's going to be about a yard shy when he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, and of course, Dylan Turner's coming across the field, and Perales has so much time. But you know, you could take off running and put your head down, but he keeps his head up and sees Turner coming across right there and, and makes a great pass. But yeah, they're a little bit short. Probably going to go for it here. Yeah, fourth down and two. They're going to keep the offense on the field. There's only two seconds remaining in the third as well. So probably the final play of the third quarter. And they going to try to pick up the first down. Yeah, it's probably going to be a definite run from, from left to right here. There's a snap. Fakes the handoff. Throws it across the middle. Ah. Catch made by Turner. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown, Naaman Forrest. How about that? Well, another great throw from Perales that time to Turner. And again, Turner, all it took was that one, you know, broken tackle to get him in the end zone. Watch right here. Yeah, what happens is they just have the play action. Everybody thinks it's going to be a run. They have big number 85, like we were saying, going from left to right to make the block. You think Cunning's going to get the ball and try to get two yards. But boy, then all of a sudden, Perales just does the little play action pass, man, and just beautiful execution. So the extra point attempt coming up here. There's a snap and hold. Kick is up. And that kick is good. Our new score, name and force, 32, Saxe 7. When we come back, we'll start the fourth quarter. We are all connected to something bigger than ourselves. Change one thing. Change everything. The things we do today have an extraordinary impact on a child's future. A better child, a better world. GISD has a ripple effect on our community. Every lesson can positively affect our future leaders. We are Garland ISD, impacting lives, changing futures. It's what we call the GISD effect. Back for the start of the fourth quarter here at Williams Stadium. And boy, Naaman Forrest with the big third quarter. It was 12 to 7 at half Naaman Forrest. And so Naaman Forrest outscored the Mustangs 20 to nothing in that third quarter to extend the lead to 32 to 7. Last one there is the young man there in the middle of the screen, Dylan Turner, with the uh, touchdown reception to give them this 25 point lead. Yeah, that was all hands. Just pick it out of the air and take off running. Nobody's going to catch him when he gets out in the open field. Just, uh-oh, a little trickery. Yeah, throw it all the way back across the field. Right, get some good yards out of this. And finally pushed out of bounds at around the 44-yard line and got an injured name and force player down here as well. But as you said, Bobby, I mean, you know, they, they've got to get points in a hurry here down by 25. And watch this. There's the catch and then just the turn and the quick throw. Wow, just a good pass, too. How about that? A good discipline out there by number one from Naaman Force. He was able to stay out there. It had been easy to crash down, but that's Steve, Stevens, Dil, uh, Dylan Stevens. And he stays out there, stays in his lane, and really saves the touchdown, you know. Or a twisted ankle, maybe. Yeah, number 24 for the Rangers, the young man down on the play. That's Xavier Avila, and he's made some big plays tonight for them on defense. And as you said, Bobby, they're, they're taking a look certainly at his left ankle. Well, while we're waiting for them and they're taking a look at him, why don't we take just a quick break here. Our score, name and force 32, Saxe 7.
First down and 10 for the Mustangs and the quick pitch out to the aforementioned number 11 in the game for the Mustangs. That is Grayson King. And King going to pick up about two yards. The injured player able to get off the field for name and four. So good, good sign for Xavier Avila. Yeah, he's he's walking pretty gingerly out there. There's nothing worse than a, a twisted ankle. I mean, those things yep. linger all season long. It's not like they just heal up like a bruise or something. It just takes forever. And uh, It'll make you hobble all year. Quick throw from George, catches May. That's going to be a first down by number five, Kalik Lockett. Lockett. See, he's right at the chains, and they are going to move him. So a gain of about eight. Now, we said that George can throw the ball out there. He's just not had the chance that, uh, in this game. He's not been able to get a, a rhythm and, and be able to just start throwing the ball around. But it's time now that they have to do it. Another quick pitch out here. Once again to a number 11, Grayson King, and he's going to pick up about four yards on that first down carry. Not much places to go right there, and you can see it looked like a wall of green. Snap to George is going to hand it off this time to King to the left side. He's going to pick up the first down across the 35 all the way to the 34. So change things up a little bit here. Grayson King in the ball game now in the running back position. Yeah, you see, you see number 10 coming in there and uh, Cunning's out there playing defense now and giving him a little hands up. Well, quick throw out there and it is knocked down. I believe that was Cunning that got his hand on it, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, right there. All these guys going both ways, playing offense, defense. Yeah, he gets up, knocks the ball down right there. <laughs> Not over this side over here. Quick throw out to the right side this time. And a lot of running room out here. That is going to be Cortland Scott. He's going to be close, maybe a yard shy of the first down. So a gain of about nine on the play. Just again, just that quick throw outside. Yeah, they've been needing to use this all all game. They just haven't really had the opportunity. It's just been getting, you know, pushed back, getting bad situations, fumbles, turnovers. All start. Again, penalties. It's just been one thing after another, and they've just really never had a good rhythm. Yeah, that's one of those that will drive the coaches crazy. You know, you have a third and one. And now five yard penalty after that. And look at homecoming here for Name of Force. All the mums hanging there on the fence. Uh, somebody had a great idea to how to make a whole lot of money <laughs> with, <laughs> with ribbons. Yeah, let's, let's tie a bunch of ribbons together and charge you hundreds of dollars for it. I mean, well, that's a genius idea. They've gotten so big now that you, I mean, it's almost like you have to have uh, some kind of a brace to, to put it on your shoulders. It would wear you out. They're so heavy. Oh, yeah. You got teddy bears hanging off of them and <laughs> bells hanging off of them. They drag all, they, some of them are five feet long. You oh, some no. of them from head to toe. Four down, the Mustangs going for it. The throw out there is complete. That will be a first down to number one, Cortland Scott. That will move the chains and keep the offense on the field for the Saxe Mustangs. They have a little bit of something right here with their quarterback. I mean, he's got a good arm. He knows how to spin the ball. They got good athletes to catch it too. Timeout. Naaman Forrest. They've been going to call a timeout here, their second charge timeout of the half. Why don't we take a quick break with them? We've got 9.36 remaining in the game. Our score, name it for us, 32, Sac C7.
back from timeout. Sexy with a first and 10, 936 remaining. They've got a lot of work to do, still have time, but they've got to score quickly. There's a snap. George throws it out George quick. Once again, that is number Scott one, Cortland Scott. Scott. So they found some here throwing to Cortland Scott. He's had several completions Henry, on this drive. Henry. Gain of about four. Yeah, they bring him in motion and then they swing him right back out. Get it to some guys that can really move. You know, some great athletes. Get the ball to them. And off to King coming to the left side, trying to get outside. There's a penalty flag. It's going to be a face mask, I believe. I see Wesley on the stop. Flag on the play. So we will check the flag, but again, the outside run to King for about a yard only, but we'll check this uh, penalty. Well, it's a holding, holding call. All right. All right. Holding. holding. For seven. For the, for the. So you actually had two holding penalties called against the Mustangs on that play. So we'll back them up 10 yards. We'll take a look at it again. I think it's right here at this defensive end spot right there. It looked like a pull down tackle. So second down, about 16 to go now after the penalty yardage marked off. George looking for a wide receiver screen. Catch is complete. Spin move still on his feet. That is number four, Santana Quinn with the catch. It's his first catch of the game. Shows why he needs the ball in his hand, though. He's strong. It's hard to pull him down. Yeah, nice run after catch. Gained about 12 on the play. It's going to set up a third down and about three. In time becoming an enemy of the Mustangs. They hand it off to King. He's going to pick up the first down and more inside the five. Going to be first and goal, Saxe at the three. And they've got to hurry things up here. Probably where you're going to get the ball to Harris. I mean, I think he's a bruiser back. Heavy guy. There he goes. Yeah, hand off to Harris, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So pretty quick touchdown there for Saxe. Just what they needed. Yeah, they made it look easy. They, they spread the ball around, threw the ball like, you know, we were thinking they were going to come in and throw the ball a little bit, and we just haven't seen it. And all of a sudden, you start throwing the ball, spread that defense out. It's not one-dimensional anymore. And then you give it to your bruiser back and let him march into the end zone. Swing and gate look again from the Mustangs here on this extra point attempt. Saxe, I don't think, has enough men on the field. Boy, Dill knew that play was coming. He scouted that one out. Yeah, he sure did. Makes the big play. Bobby, I was trying to count the Mustangs there on that extra point. I only counted 10 out there. Unless I missed it somewhere, but yeah, here comes the, the replay. Yeah, big hit from Marcus Deal on that play. And so the extra point, we'll keep it here. The extra point, no good. So 32 to 13 is our new score. 19 point advantage for Naaman Forrest. You know, I thought, and again, that, that in essence was a two point, you know, conversion attempt right there. But they, and that's what I thought Saxe would do to try to get that to 17. But it does not go the way they wanted it to. And so 32-13, our new score for Naaman Forrest. So Naaman, 8-0-2 away here for moving to a district win here. They'd move to 2-1, and one, of course, in district play if they can hold on. Saxe still has plenty of time here. Let's see if we've got an onside kick coming up here from the Mustangs. Oh, yeah. Keep it interesting. Well, you know, they came out and tried the onside right at halftime. They did. Yep. Naaman was able to just drive it down the, down the field and score. And, and all their possessions in that third quarter, uh, they were able to score on. And so, uh, you know, I think when they went into halftime, it looked like the Rangers 
decided to come out in a different offense because they had been uh, running the ball a lot and then that in that third quarter they came out and they they had Perales in empty backfield and they spread the defense out and started throwing the ball all over the place and I think that kind of confused Saxy a little bit and they started scoring on them. So Bobby they're lining back up here looks like maybe for the extra point attempt so I there must have been a penalty I never saw anything I never saw anything and I haven't heard the refs call anything so we're back out here for a two point conversion again there's a handoff and yeah he's not going to get there they hand it off to Harris trying to get up the middle but again just an interesting thing I never saw any penalty we were getting ready for the kickoff yeah. there, and they bring uh, it, the... It, yeah, and I saw no ref go out there and, and make a call or anything, but it's probably not the best idea to, to line up and try to run right at Marcus Dill either, so he said no to that again. Exactly. So the extra point, just like we stated moments ago, no good. 32-13 our score. Now the Mustangs kickoff team back on the field, and again, we'll see if they... Decide to uh, try an onside kick here. Perales, 8 of 17 for 100 yards, three touchdowns. But Isaiah Cunning, man, he's been the name of the game. 22 oh, carries, 166 yards, seven and a half yards of carry, two touchdowns. And then Flores on the receiving end, he's got 56 yards with four receptions and two touchdowns. And then Dylan Turner, he's got him a touchdown. So uh, it's been a pretty good offensive night for the Rangers. Here comes the onside kick attempt, and it bounces right into the hands of number 22, Jaden Flores. Jason Flores, pardon me, and he is able to fall on it. So the Rangers do recover that onside kick attempt. Now, can Saxe hold them here? They, they need a quick three and out. And Naaman just needs to, to be able to run the ball, keep that time moving, and pick up a couple of first downs. Snap to Perales, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw it across. He's got uh -huh. a man there, but Dylan Turner could not hold on he to it. He was so wide open. Perfect call right there by the offensive coordinator. Just have Turner just roll right down the field. But I think Perales saw it and thought, oh, my goodness, he's so open. He tried to get it out of his hands before he got a good grip on the football. If you noticed on that replay play action that time, probably fooled the Mustangs a little bit. And then, as you said, Turner right up the seam, had him, but maybe underthrew him just a little bit. And now we go back to the ground game. The handoff once again to Cunning. He's going to pick up another 11. Well, that's a tough one. You actually give up that first down like that. do that now you've added another two minutes of offense and the umpire gets in the action here as well <laughs> look at him he gets a solo solo look at his smile he's like man i got me a tackle tonight i'll tell you what he's a pretty big guy too <laughs> i think he can do it <laughs> yep first down and 10 throw across the middle looking for flores once again pretty good coverage that time by the mustangs yeah, I'm not sure why you go and throw these ball, the ball like this right now, especially if you're not just totally wide open because you stop the clock. And yeah. really, that's really what you want to keep moving. You want the clock to keep moving. Yeah, and you're picking up 10 yards a carry, it seems like, with cunning. And right, so you just keep running the ball. And if you need to throw the ball, then you can do a little play action pass. But I don't know if I'd be throwing the ball straight up on first down to a double covered guy either because you, you've got to be really careful with the ball. Second down and 10 here for the Rangers. There's a snap and penalty flags on the play.
It's going to be a delay of game once again called against Naaman unless they're going to give him the timeout. Up oh, there's the call for delay of game, so that's going to back up the Rangers five more. Yeah, that's why you, you like you like to get in there. You've been running the ball so well. Get your play in, call it, and run the ball, and uh, keep that keep that clock moving. You're down to five seconds again. Yeah, they're gonna have to call a timeout here, I believe, unless they're resetting the. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna reset the play clock. Paralysis. Please reset the game clock to seven minutes and 25 seconds. And they're resetting the game clock as well to 725. You can see Paralis out there going, wait, look at the clock. I Thank only you. have five seconds to call my play. Snap handoff to Cunning up the middle. Boy, bounces off one tackle, still moving. And going to be knocked. Run. Yeah, it was indeed. Knocked it out of bounds around the 41, maybe the 42, so a gain of about seven. Bobby it looked like he was going to be tackled in the backfield. I mean, he gets met right there, and I don't know how he gets away. He just uses his hands. Look at this stiff arming. Wow. And then a little shoulder dip. Pick up another three yards. So big play here for the Mustang defense. Third down and a long seven. There's a snap. Looking to throw it. Plenty of time. Perales rolls out. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got Flores once again, who gets taken off his feet around the 21-yard line. But that is enough for the first down. Wow, he's just coming from left to right. Just buying his time, big number 72, making a, key, a key block right there, giving his quarterback some time to throw. And man, he put the ball right between the twos on Flores. That's a big time play right there. Yes, it was. Third and long. They were able to convert it. First and 10 now at the 20, handoff to Cunning to the left side. This time, boy, a good play out there by the defensive end to come off the block and tackle him for a loss. That was number 42 for the Mustangs on the play. Jake Brumbaugh. Yeah, he's getting held right there, and he still is able to get off that block and make the tackle. Good job by the defensive end there. I'd expect the Rangers to milk this clock way down to two or three seconds each time before they snap it. There's a snap. Play action once again. Time for Perales. He's going to come to the right. And boy, that ball is tipped and still <laughs> caught. Oh, my goodness. And guess who? Number 22, Jason Flores, yeah. once again. Just He seems like he's always there. Now, I thought Perales had time to just go ahead and take off, make the safe play and run. You didn't have anybody covering you. That could have been a that could have been a pick six right there. You got to play smart right here. Clock continues to run. Morales in trouble. He's going to roll to his right. He's got room out here. And he's going to run out of bounds. Uh -oh. And it takes a shot out of bounds. No flag on that one. I know. I'm kind of surprised as well. Yeah, he definitely is giving himself up. Running out of bounds. Slows down everything. Take a look at it here. I thought he was going to have a chance at the end zone, but he's going to go out of bounds. And... Yeah, he takes a hit right there, two feet out of bounds. I'm surprised that doesn't give him an automatic first down. Second down and goal at the five. We approach five minutes remaining in the game, 5.14 to be exact. Obviously, Mustangs want to hold Naaman here. 
There's a quick throw out. Floors once again makes the catch, but pretty good defensive play that time by the Mustangs to read that one. Yeah. Prowlis needed to give him a little more time. He, right when he got across, Prowlis put it on him pretty quick. He just needed to wait just a little bit so that uh, Flores had a time to uh, turn around. He could have actually been open. He had plenty of time to run outside there, but I think the rush got in on him quick and he had to get rid of it. What you saw there from our slow motion replay, I mean, Flores had that ball go just about everywhere, and then he finally came up with the catch, a great catch by him. Third and three, I think you've given the ball a couple times to your, your back that's been averaging, uh, let's see, he's averaging 7.5 yards per carry. I'm out. Name's going to go ahead and use a timeout here, and that's going to be their last one of the game. So why don't we take a break with them? We have 427 remaining in the game with our score. Name and Force 32, Saxe 13. We are all connected to something bigger than ourselves. Change one thing, change everything. The things we do today have an extraordinary impact on a child's future. A better child, a better world. GISD has a ripple effect on our community. Every lesson can positively affect our future leaders. We are Garland ISD, impacting lives, changing futures. It's what we call the GISD effect. A happy homecoming uh, squad there of the cheerleaders for Name and Forest. Rangers about to score again here. They're going to look for the throwback, and they've got a man out there. The catch is made. Dylan Turner touchdown, wow. Name and Forest. Turner has some great hands. He's been contested on all his catches, and he goes up and wins the battle. Watch this, he's, he's covered, man. He just snags it out of the air with authority and tells you about it. Those kind of guys, you, you, you know, you, you want those guys on your team. Somebody that you can say, hey, I want to throw it to you, and you're going to go up and fight you're going to the catch ball. It. Yep. Yeah. You know, we, we saw him catch the ball off the back of a, of a Saxe's helmet uh, earlier. Extra point attempt is up. And that one is good. So we'll keep it here. Our new score, Name It Forest 39, Saxe 13. So Name It Forest, again, looking to improve to two and one in district play. Their one loss came to Wiley East. Of course, that was two weeks ago. And again, you know, Name It started a little slow on the season. They, you know, they only have one win on the year, and that was over Rowlett. Now they're looking, of course, for their second win of the year and their second win in district play. But uh, this is a, a pretty big uh, lead right now for Name and Forest. And again, you know, we've talked about it, Saxe, this was really one that they can't, couldn't afford to drop. This is gonna drop them to one and three in district play. Yeah, it's really uh, hard to come back after that. It's gonna be tough sledding for them to get into the playoffs. I mean, they're going to have to just win straight all, win it out to get to the playoffs now. Yes, yeah, kind of looking that way and yeah, name it Forrest. If they hold on here, would move to two and one, as we've mentioned in district play and obviously keep them still on track for a district champion, albeit, of course, as I mentioned, you, you've got Wiley East and Garland playing right now. They're both undefeated and obviously Wiley East has won the game against name it Forrest. But Naaman's still thinking, hey, we can win a district championship here. You see the kick come down to number 11 once again, Grayson King, and well, then mark the ball around the 32. You know, anytime that you play Saxe, they, they've been a powerhouse in this district for so long, and uh, all of a sudden you go out and you and you beat Saxe with authority. Uh, I, I think that you know it, it's it helps your ball club. Next week, even if you know you, you play up because you feel like you can beat anybody once you beat a team like Saxe. Saxe is a big, strong team, and they've got a lot of depth, a lot of guys playing, you know, just one way. They're not playing both ways. And 
So you, you feel like you've beat a team like that with authority that you're going to do pretty good. You, you don't think you're going to lose anymore. You know, you think you're going to win. It's it's a mindset. So right there, Cortland Scott coming around the right side there. That is again a pass. It's that little quick pass as he's coming around. And well, we've seen Cortland Scott be involved quite a bit tonight for Saxe on the offensive side of the ball. And they're going to run that same play this time to the left. This is Kendrick Hanks. And they're going to push him out of bounds. Yeah, got a lineman about 20 yards downfield blocking somebody. Yeah. Uh, he, he's doing that blind side, uh, you know, that movie like blind side. Yeah. He, he got him a guy and he ran him about 30 yards downfield and pancake. And he was a uh, doing his Michael Orr imitation right. right there, right? First down and 10 here for the Mustangs. So we are close to midfield, approaching three and a half minutes left in the game. There's the handoff to Grayson King, trying to get outside to the left, and he is tackled for a loss of two. Yeah, inside, in, in bounds too. The clock is moving. And Naaman's kind of put together a pretty good game, don't you think? I mean, yes, now they they, they're up 351 total yards. They had 135 in the air. And listen to this. They had 216 yards on the ground. Now, that's pretty good. The difference in this game was Saxe has four turnovers, and uh, Naaman made them pay for it. When they had those turnovers, they went down and scored in each one of them, and uh, Naaman had zero turnovers. So that's a big key part of this game here. And, uh, Perales, 12 of 23, 135 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. Isaiah Cunning, 25 carries, 100 and, 182 yards, two touchdowns. I'd say he's going to be one of the players of the week, I would think, after this uh, performance tonight. Yeah, remember we've seen him make a couple of plays on defense as well. well you know, blocked a, Knocked a one pass down, attempt. Yeah, sure. absolutely, and had a sack earlier as well. Boy, there's the uh, throw, and you saw it just out of the reach of number nine that time, Kendrick Hanks. There's yeah, a penalty. That had touchdown written all over it. It did. Penalty on that last play as well, or before the snap, you had a, a delay of game call against the Mustangs, so. That made it second and 17. You saw the incomplete pass there. So third and 17 for Saxe. George has been really efficient. He's 75% on the night, 12 of 16. Wide receiver screen here and some blockers out in front as well. Then he loses the football. Boy, let's see who came up with this one. I think Saxe may have recovered it. Yeah, it was number 14 for the Mustangs able to recover. Robbie Rothrock and well, that was almost the fifth turnover of the game for the Mustangs. Pretty good run after catch for Kendrick Hanks and then all of a sudden he just get it, gets it knocked out of his hands. Yeah, I mean, that's just the way it's been going tonight. Uh, just every time they get a little something going and all of a sudden, you know, they have a turnover or a penalty or something, just always taking their rhythm. So fourth down and nine, Saxe in punt uh, formation. They, they got another they flag. Moving, yeah, nobody was set. Ball start, number two of the offense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. So as you said, a false start called against the Mustangs. It's going to back them up five, and we'll have a re-kick. And this time, the name and Force Rangers going to send somebody back to return it. That is number three, Dylan Turner. Yeah, Brendan George has been pretty, you know, efficient, 75%. I mean, he can throw the ball. They just never got in any kind of a rhythm, and they weren't able to run the ball either. They kind of share the ball when they run with four or five different running backs and uh, I don't think they ever just got into that real good hey this is what we what are you as a team you know you got to figure that out are we a running team are we a throwing team what are we as a team and I'm not sure that Saxe knows what they are I believe we may have had a timeout called here by the Mustangs and 
So we'll just keep it here. We've got 125 remaining in the game. 39-13. This is a big win for Naaman Force. We've talked about it all night. They'll move to two and one in district play and two and three overall. But again, non-district schedule doesn't really matter much at this point. Only the district, you know, the district schedule. Now they've got another big one coming up. Do Naaman Force as they've got Garland coming up and that's going to be another big game and another test for the Rangers. Yeah, they got Garland, then South, then Wiley, North, then Lakeview. So, you know, they've got Garland as, as top dog in the league, too, in the division. So right now, uh, they got to start preparing already for next week, playing a, a big component with Garland. And Garland's going to be a little angry because they had a big game tonight as well. And I don't think they're they're winning that game <laughs> at this point. So they're going to they're going to face up with a uh, angry Garland team next week. Yeah, it'll be a big game next week. And with well, the Mustangs, they've just got to try to turn this thing around. So again, they're going to fall after tonight to one and three in district play. And there's the uh, punt. And Bobby, you mentioned it earlier. So they're just going to let it roll dead at around the 30. You know, really at this point, Saxe almost has to, as you said, really win out in order to make the playoffs. And again, uncharted territory, as you said, you know, Saxe really, you know, over the last 10 years or so has been, you know, they've made the playoffs every year. And so this is, you know, kind of unfamiliar territory for the Mustangs. Just about set to get back underway. And now Saxe does have the bye this next week. So they're off. And then they turn around and face Garland. So both of these two teams' next opponent is the Garland Owls. Naaman plays right. them next week. And then Saxe plays them in two weeks after the bye week. See an injured Mustang on the field after the short gain on first down. Stop the clock here as so we are inside of a minute to go. This is number 99, I believe, there on the field, Josh Rodriguez. And as the trainers come across to take a look at him, why don't we take our final break of the game? Our score, name and force 39, Saxe 13. Do -do -do -do. Second down as we're back to live action. Number 99 for the Mustangs, able to get up and walk off the field. We will count down our final 41 seconds here of the game. Name and force in that victory formation. They'll have to snap it two more times. There's the snap and taking a knee is the uh, Rangers. You got a one second difference, but they may just go ahead and let the clock run out. Yeah, that's indeed what it looks like they're gonna do. So both teams come to the 50 yard line. They're gonna come across. So a big win for Name and Force tonight. You know, pretty close game. If you remember, this was 12 to seven at halftime. Half time. Name it with the lead. It ends up 39 to 13. So Naaman really came out in the second half, took care of business. And of course, for the Mustangs, the four turnovers didn't help their cause tonight. Yeah, they had a 20 point third quarter, and that was really the difference. They just couldn't ever, Saxe couldn't ever do anything after that. Yeah, the 20 point third quarter, absolutely the difference of the game. Our final here tonight from Williams Stadium, name it for us 39, Saxe 13. We'll see you next time on GRS TV.